Hey what's up guys, this is Andrew from 3DDC and this video is going to be a tutorial about using CAD. This is going to be using Onshape. So I recently switched to Ubuntu which is a distribution of Linux and where before I was using Windows and on Windows I used Fusion 360 and I really liked Fusion 360 uh, but when I switched to Linux unfortunately uh, Autodesk doesn't have anything that Linux, that, that supports Linux. Uh, so I started using Onshape, which is a browser-based CAD program. So you don't have to install anything. You can get on a computer that's connected to the internet and access all your documents. And when I was learning Fusion 360, one of the videos that really helped me was one by Adafruit, one of their layer-by-layer -layer videos about making a circuit board template to hold uh, various circuit boards. So I'm going to do basically the same thing, but with Onshape, and uh, for the Raspberry Pi uh, 2 Model B. So this one right here. And how I'm going to start is I'm going to create a sketch by pressing Sketch. I'm going to sketch, just select the top plane for the sketch plane. Okay. And I go over here. And I can pull this image up, and I see I need to create a board that's 85 by 56 millimeters so I'm going to press I'm going to press R to create a center rectangle and I'm going to use the origin as the center point okay and I'm just going to make it however big it doesn't matter I'm going to press D to add dimensions so this needs to be 85 and give it a minute give it a minute to update it needs to be 85 by 56. Okay, so that's the actual size of the board. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just actually going to offset that so it's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to press this. I'm, I'm pressed O for offset. And I'm going to select all the edges. Okay, and that's automatically offsetting it by about 5 millimeters. Uh, that actually does look pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and go with that 5 millimeters. So I'm just going to press enter. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is start creating those holes. So, over here you can see the holes, and if you, you do some math, you can see that the center of the hole, so the distance from the center of the hole to the edge of the board, is going to be 3.5. You do that by taking 56 by minus 49, and then divided by 2, so you get 3.5. And the holes are 2.75 in diameter, but I'm going to go ahead and make those 2.5, because what I'm going to do is create pegs that will attach the board to the this template. So I'm going to press C for circle and I'm going to go up here somewhere and just create a circle. Then I'm going to press D for dimension and I'm going to add its diameter of 2.5. Okay, And then I'm still on dimension so I'm going to go from here to here and I know that that needs to be 3.5. Okay. And then I also know from here to here needs to be 3.5. Okay, cool. So now I can offset that one. So I'm going to press O on the keyboard again. And I think I'm just going to offset it by about mm, 2 millimeters. So I'm just press enter and type in 2 and press enter again. Okay, so this is going to be the actual standoff. And this will be the peg that it will sit on. Okay, now what I need to do just come over here and press C again create a circle give it a diameter of 2.5 okay then if I look over here I see it's the same dimensions pretty much uh, from this side from the edge of the board to the center of the circle the, the top edge of the board if that is uh, it's still gonna be 3.5 so I'm gonna go ahead and do that 3.5 Okay, but then I see from one circle to the other, it's going to be 58 millimeters. So I'm still on dimension, and I'm just going to select this center point and this center point, and uh, bring it up here a little bit, and f type in 58 millimeters. Okay, so now I can again offset that hole So by pressing O. And I'm going to offset it by 2 millimeters, just like the last one. 
Okay, now what I can do is I can mirror this. So I go over here to mirror, and it'll tell me to select a mirror line. This is why I made the center rectangle on the origin. I can now use the x-axis as a mirror line, so I don't have to draw that in there. So I can select that as a mirror line. Now I'm going to select the entities to be mirrored. So that's the standoffs and the pegs, or what the standoffs and pegs will be made from. Okay, and all the constraints that we set are, are still going to be there when you mirror them. Okay, uh, now the last thing I'm going to do is just put a rectangle in the center just to um, kind of save material and save time. So I'm just going to put what I need to about look like. So that looks good right there. And then I'm going to press D. I'm going to create a dimension. So that's at 10. I'm going to go ahead and keep it at 10. We'll make it exactly 10 anyway. And then from here to here, I'm going to make that 5. Okay. So now that's the entire sketch. So I can press OK there. And I'm going to start extruding. So I pretty much want to extrude everything but the center that's going to be cut out. So what I'm going to do is just go up here to extrude, or you can press Shift plus E, uh, and I'm going to select everything but that center. Just like that, and I'm going to select all the holes, or all the circles. Okay, and on shape will automatically extrude everything to 25 millimeters. Most of the time that's a little too much. <laughs> I'm just gonna make that. Uh, we we'll probably get by with two millimeters. Okay, cool. So now that's like that. Okay, so that's good for that extrude. Now it's gonna hide that sketch, so we need to go over here and press Show Sketch One, so we can see that sketch again. Now what we're gonna do is make the standoffs. So I'm just gonna press on this, this this, this, so all the circles and their offsets. This and this. Okay, and then I can press Shift plus E again to extrude. Make sure I select everything, right? Okay, and I really only need them to be, oh, uh, I need to select one more thing. Okay, and I really only need them to stick out about three millimeters. And since that was 2, I'm going to make it 5 millimeters. That way it'll go 2 millimeters through the board and then 3 millimeters out. Okay. Now that'll make the entire board even. Okay, so now that's good for that extrude. Now I'm going to make the actual pegs. Now if you wanted to make holes to put machine screws through, well then you could just, when you extrude, press remove to create holes and I'll actually show you how you can do that it's but it's basically the same concept to just make pegs and then you don't you don't have to use any screws if you create pegs that just snap the board into place and what this is for is actually prototyping so I can print this out and determine whether these standoffs are going to actually work and then since it's all sketch based I can go change one variable and the entire thing will change so I'm going to press Shift plus E again to extrude. And I want these, this to stick out about 5 millimeters, so I'm going to make it 10 millimeters. So it'll go 5 millimeters through the board and the standoff, and then 5 millimeters sticking out. Okay. Now, say if I was to want to make holes, I could go over here to remove. Go this way. And that would create holes, but I don't want to do that. I uh, just want to add it to it. So create create 10 millimeters. So that'll create those pegs. So press OK. And that's pretty much it. Uh, what I would recommend doing though is adding some fillets. Uh, you can add some to the corners to make it look good. But where you really need them at is right here, right here, and right here. That'll give it more strength. So I'm just going to select the edges I want. Okay, and I'm going to press Shift plus F to 
fill at those edges, and we'll automatically do it to five millimeters. I really don't need it that much. Maybe two point five millimeters. See what that looks like. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so that's good for that. And then for the actual pegs, I want to give them a little bit of a fillet too. Uh, but just a little bit, because I don't want to interfere with them fitting. This is just for stability. Okay, so I selected all of them. I'm again going to press Shift F. And I definitely don't need it to be 5 millimeters. In fact, I think I'm just going to do 1.5. Let me see what that looks like. Okay, yeah, 1.5 looks really good. So I'm going to keep it like that. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is apply some fillets to these corners just to kind of make it look good. So I'm going to press Shift F. And I'm going to select the corners that I want to fill it. Okay, so 5 millimeters actually is, looks pretty good there. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it 5 millimeters. Okay, and that's pretty much everything you have to do. Now, what's really cool about this is, say I prototyped it, and I found out that these need to be a little bit farther apart. Well, I go up here to sketch, edit, and you see they're 58 millimeters apart, but say I needed them kind of, I needed to be more apart. So I can just double-click that and change it to 65. Okay, well, that updated the sketch, and it updated the mirror. Well, let's see what happens after we do that it updated everything so now the entire thing you just change one variable and change the entire thing so of course I don't want it to be 65 right now and put it back to uh, 58 and the, the same applies for the thickness of the entire board it, it's when you're prototyping this is, becomes a really good time saver so you can just print something out and everything if you find something wrong, everything will update when you change one variable in the sketch. So that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Thanks.